Namaste. How have you been? I cannot overemphasize the importance of developing your body and the breath side by side the meditation practice. Why is this so? Yeah. There's a science behind meditation. Yeah. So we use the body as a tool yeah, to direct the energy yeah, of the body, of the earth, and that energy passes through the spine, through the nerve endings and clusters that we call chakras, before it ascends to the brain. Yeah. That's the hard truth about meditation. Yeah. And that is a safer path. There are techniques which we confuse the brain, overload the brain, so we can suddenly yeah, open the silent centers there, but those are not safe practices. Our brain cells, once they are damaged, we cannot repair them anymore. So a safe practice is for us yeah, to open the pathways yeah, so that we can use those lower centers to filter the energy. So when we lift that energy up to the brain, it's just enough yeah, to lead or result in light activation of the silent centers there. So we don't inflict damage and uh, yeah, irreparable injury yeah, to the health of our nervous system. All right. So that's the essence of the Hatha Yoga. Now, Hatha Yoga is a process of purification, yeah, opening and cleansing, purification of the lower centers. Yeah, and through the process of doing that, we balance yeah, our polarities, yeah, the right and the left channels, yeah, the ha and the tha of the practice. Yeah, so we can yeah, open the central channel, the central system, the shishumna. And then the energy which comes from the earth, yeah, it's the same energy we harness in the hips. Yeah, we call it the apana. And then by utilizing the techniques of Hatha Yoga, we can reverse the natural flow of the earth energy instead of flowing downwards. Yeah, we can collect and seal the energy inside and then we can rise it up. Yeah, and this uh, natural flow of the prana rising and exiting the body upwards, we can reverse that too by allowing that energy to descend further down so they blend. And the blending point, yeah, the chakras of the spine and the Manipura chakra, the core yeah, being the center yeah, of our astral and energetic anatomy would have to be developed because this is where yeah, we filter and we process the energy. So when we're lifting that energy up already, it doesn't inflict harm and damage to our cardiorespiratory system yeah, as well as the brain. Yeah, so you might ask, yeah, how complex yeah, should my practice be? And how should I organize the practice so it suits the energy channeling process. Okay, yeah. It's simple, really. Um, if you follow the steps of like just going through the natural, inherent yeah, um, movement or the action of the body, yeah, as humans, yeah, we are more efficient folding forward first before curling backwards. Yeah, so follow that natural flow first. So when you practice, yeah, so of course you have to center the body first. And centering of the body means sitting in a meditative position such as Sukhasana if you're just starting to practice. Even if you're an advanced practitioner, Sukhasana is really ideal because this is more sustainable and lighter for the joints. And eventually, maybe you know, once or twice per week, yeah, you can practice the other complex sitting asanas such as Siddhasana or Padmasana or as, or as you flow through your asana. All right, so sitting in a, in a cross leg position, yeah, you may use the prop to support the hips. Yeah, you can even do it what, what, with your elevation, the hips are lightly up, so it's less draining for the joints in the low back. And then find maybe two, three minutes of centering the breath. It's important. 
you know, to bring our practice into the present moment. And there's no uh, other techniques that I can you know, recommend to you yeah, than the breath. So just feeling the breath as it is, inhaling and exhaling, all right, with your eyes closed. And then just really try your best to um, become one-pointed. The breath is a good point. You might observe yeah, the length of the breath, uh, the inhalation being long and full, and the exhalation, yeah, longer even, and, in, um, and deep, and then all the way down. You can meditate upon the sound of the breath, yeah, the light inhalation as it pierces the walls of the nostrils and the humming exhalation. Yeah, or even the temperature of the breathing. Yeah, so the inhalation is light, cool, dry. The exhalation is moist and warm. Yeah. Or the texture of the breath. Texture of the breath meaning the, the softness and the fluidity of the air. Any imbalances you might be feeling the nostrils there, acknowledge them. Yeah. and the rising and the expanding of your lungs and your inner cavity as you inspire, and that mild suspension of the top, and then fluidly exhale the breath out. So you may meditate upon those qualities of the breath. Right? You may even what do some internal techniques. Yeah? Like when you inhale, you may lift your eyebrows up and allow your awareness to suspend. So those are the uh, ways for you to channelize the brain. So it's not yet meditation, it's just a way for you to come fully present. So after like two or three minutes of that, you may start to move the body in circular motion. Our bodies are also good at circles yeah, and concentric motion because that's how the energy flows inside, like the sphere spiraling. Good. And then you might do like what this, side stretching, you might fan to side to side and circle around. So just do uh, lightly open yeah, the major joints. Yeah. And you can roll the shoulders there. Yeah. Since you're sitting, for example, five minutes, expect yeah, your joints to react. You might feel them a bit sleepy. So after, when you feel like they, are st they start to become a little rigid or restless, yeah, you may uncross them already. Yeah. And then give them some light wiggle, pointing and flexing, awakening the joints. Okay, you might lightly you give them a light shake and then moving our hips to side to side. All right. So I suggest after your sitting position, so break the stagnation by doing a neutral uh, position, such as for example, Tadasana. You may stand into the Dasana. Good. And then from there, you may um, move the shoulders and the hips. You can even sway like this and circle around. And then you can do some, what? Yeah, random movements. You can march the legs. Yeah. You can lift the arms and then climb them up. All right. Or you can even do what? Some active hip mobility work. Bending and rising. That, that one. Bending and rising <laughs> all right or you can do yeah a classical one yeah downward facing dog yeah, a modern technique of what yeah stretching the body this one at the mukha Svanasana. all right so this is very common so you don't have to be really perfect in the downward dog so the idea is just to allow yeah, the body to open and downward facing dog is a good overall technique of what opening the body and feeling the foundation and the strength. At the same time, it's, it's an inversion. Yeah, so you allow the pressure of your body to lightly compress the brain, and that awakens. So not really awaken, but stimulates and give you. Uh, inspiration and energy and after that yeah so come back sitting right so this now where um, the important part is yeah flexion is number one for me yes yeah, so this is our body is inherently good at folding forward so you might start with flexion all right so there are many flexing asana there all right you may place something behind your or under your legs then after flexion yeah, break the cycle by what? Doing a flow. You may do a downward dog, you may stand and then do some or one or two standing asana. All right, so you can just walk around, you may roll the shoulders there, and after that, go back sitting. Yeah, after the flexion, the next is what? Yeah, we're also good at twisting. Right. And there are many twisting asana. For me, the Abramasindrasana is very good. 
yeah, in activating the core and in cleansing the uh, pathways there. And at the same time, allowing the breath, the pressure of the breath, you know, to lightly stimulate the Manipura chakra and the bottom chakras there. Whereas, of course, after one side, so you might do some releasing and then maybe a pendulum like this, or you can shake the legs in front, or you may do another forward bend before you turn and twist the other way. All right, so after the twist, yeah, you can break the cycle again, you can flow. Uh, if you're doing a vinyasa, for example, you can stand or you can just do maybe another round of standing asana. All right, you can do a warrior two, a side stretch, yeah, this one, or a side angle position, right? Um, because the next one is side bending, because side stretching, you know, this is really good for balancing what? The right and the left channels, the ida and the pingala. At the same time, release stagnation here and the hips too, and your shoulders, yeah, so because after twisting, your spine tends to um, compress a bit, yeah, since you're activating the core, and then by releasing that uh, compression you know, through side bending. And there are many side bending asana there. You can do a side angle position standing, or you can do what? Yeah, sitting side bend. Yeah, so you can do what a variation of the parikasana or the gate position. When he's bent to the side, yeah, you can place a hand there to the opposite knee and reach over and do a side stretch. Right? There's something which opens the side trunk. All right, so forward bend, yeah, twisting, lateral extension. All right, next is what? Yeah, you can do back bends now. So back bend uh, is tackled uh, after, towards the lateral part that opens the disc of our spine. And there are many back bending asana. You can just lie down on your tummy like this. Yeah, you can rub the spine forward. And then arching, you know, if uh, your practice permits, yeah, you can do what? The kneeling position, we call the camel. Yeah, so you may reach high, you may approach this with your toes tucked and then reaching for your heels, or you can relax the toes and then flatten them, rising up, and yeah, leaning backwards. But approach back bend, of course, with preparation. That's why back bend should be tackled, should be practiced towards the latter part of your practice. Then after back bend, since the spine yeah, um, has opened more than the average range of motion, you need to reset the spine. And for me, yeah, so strength is always part of the practice. Yeah, for me, yeah, you have to really develop the strength, the muscular strength, because at the end of the day, really, yeah, we need to keep our sitting position upright. And without core strength, this will be very difficult. And you can do a balancing asana. Yeah, balancing asana is to restore. Yeah, and to bring the joints back to the neutral position. And then you can do what? A simple what? Cross or um, not cross, but deep squat position. This one. Yeah, this one is good for restoring the hips after a back bend. You can do what? Yeah, a leg balance. Yeah, you can do this. Yeah. A simple one. You can do what? A simple warrior three. You can hold on to any prop there. You can hold on to a chair. Not to promote balance, anything which promotes muscular strength, static movement, good for yeah, resetting the joints. Or yeah, if your practice permits, you can do what? Yeah, the yeah, arm balance. Yeah, you can just keep it on your tippy toes or you might lift your feet and hips up. All right, so something which promotes strength, promotes balance. Then after that, yeah, your body is energized, you're brimming with the force, you're brimming with the agni, you need to channelize that agni from the body to the brain. And we call this uh, techniques mudras. Mudras are ways for us to, yeah, hi or to bring and direct the energy we hide us from the practice. From the, and this is now the meditative part, the preparation, the meditation. And there are many, and many mudras, yeah, simple ones, is when you what lie down flat because here the pathway is open and you can do this rising up and down if your practice permits you can do the viparita karani yeah where you're lifting your feet up and your hips up and then you are not stacking but just reversing the flow of the energy from the hips up to the brain all right and other techniques first mudras but hatha yoga the viparita karani is um 
a powerful or an effective way um you can do what inversion if you're doing the headstand you can do the headstand shoulder stand anything which reverses the flow of the energy or a simple downward dog will suffice as well and then holding this one for like what three or not really three minutes but maybe uh, about 30 seconds uh, if, um, just as long as it feels like then after the inversion, after reversing the energy, you might feel blockages clogging the nostrils, yeah, because that's normal. You can release that through what? Uh, Kapalabhati, yeah, Kriya, Karmas, just to release stagnation. And you finish with a few rounds of alternate nostril breathing to balance the nadis. All right, some other mudras, if you're an advanced practitioner, as you do your nadi shodhana, for example, you may do the nabhu mudra, the sealing of the surface of the tongue against the heart palate, inhaling. You might involve the eyes lifting up. You can do what? Other mudras, for example, the Shambhavi mudra, you're gazing there between the eyebrows, passively looking. You may want to take a look at that tutorial I've given a while back regarding the technique. Or you can do the yeah, Kachari Mudra when you allow the tongue to enter the back of the uvula as you hold the position. And when you're doing the mudras, um, the sitting asana after your practice, I suggest uh, you can go back to your sukhasana and spend another, what, three, five minutes or even longer than that time doing your technique. Or you can just do your chanting here. If your practice permits, you can do what? The Siddhasana for men with the heel there, uh, just pressing uh, lightly against the uh, back of the generative organs between the anus and the genital, the perineal region. Or you can do for the ladies, it's called the Siddha Yoni Asana. So I've given also tutorials about this. So this is just a recap or a review of how, how you want to, to reorganize your practice. Or you can do the other sitting asana, the what? Um, Guptasana. Yeah, or you can do the Shwastikasana. And then just try and hold it still. Yeah, if you want to lean back against the wall there to keep your body upright, do that. You can do the chanting as well. Chanting is also a mudra. Yeah, so you can open the other pathways there, vocalizing, and that connects to the silent centers of the brain for what? The uh, amplification of the brain waves of the alpha, theta, and that leads to the relaxation of the brain. And then you lie down in the Shavasana. The Shavasana called over your body so you keep it warm you keep your head elevated you may want to also take a look at that tutorial i've given about the shavasana and all of this yeah yeah for me is uh, i'd say um an order which agrees to our nature yeah and yeah the flow of the energy and just stay in the shavasana as long um, as you can, yeah, if you drift and fall asleep, just be. Uh, it's meant to be, you deserve it. But if you can, you hold it still, you're just listening to Nada. Yeah, don't uh, deliberately fall asleep. Yeah, so try your best to keep it aware, keep it suspended, because your body is so energized. You might be feeling the subtleness already, just meditating upon the subtleness you feel, the hands, the feet, and even the sound of the Nada. Good. So hopefully that helps and answers some question regarding, yes, uh, your practice, self-practice is difficult, you know, especially if you um, don't have the resources to learn outside. So I can relate to that. I didn't have a teacher. But yeah, when you're dedicated, when you're passionate and you're committed, yeah, it's really possible. Very, very possible. All right. So thank you. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have a lovely day. Namaste.